Hello and welcome to our video review of the Intel Arc A750 Limited Edition graphics card. This is Intel's first entry into the discrete GPU market and it promises to deliver decent gaming performance at an affordable price. But does it live up to the hype? In this video, we'll take a look at the Intel Arc A750's design, features, aesthetics, performance, and value for money. Did Intel has improved this card with driver updates since its launch? So stay tuned and let's dive into the Intel Arc A750 Limited Edition Graphics Card Review. First, let's talk about the design of the card. The Intel Arc A750 has a minimalist and sleek look with a matte black color and silver trim along the edge. The card has a dual fan design that keeps it cool and quiet under load. It has an 8 plus 6 pin power connector and it has 3 display port and 1 HDMI output. It feels heavy for its class and I like how Intel designed this card. It looks premium and compact in my impression. For the specification, the Intel Arc A750 features 28 XE cores, 448X MX engines, and a base clock of 250 MHz and 8GB of GDDR6 memory running at 16GB per second speed on a 256-bit interface, which gives it a bandwidth of 512GB per second. It also has TBP of 225 watts. For gaming, this card supports XE Super Sampling or XESS, Intel's AI Enhanced Image Upscaling technology that boosts frame rates and image quality. For streaming and content creation, this card features hardware accelerated AV1 encode. It allows encoding video using the AV1 codec, which is a next generation and royalty free video codec that offers better compression and quality than H.264 video format. AV1 encode can also improve the performance and visual fidelity of games that support ray tracing by using XESS to enhance the resolution and the graphics quality of the game. Intel Arc AV1 Encode is supported by various video editing and streaming software such as DaVinci Resolve and the XSplit. To test the performance and show the aesthetic of the card, we will build it in a modest setup unlike the usual extreme builds we've seen in some reviews. I think it is the best way to test the card performance in a more realistic scenario. I'll put the components list in the description and now let's get to the building part. Now let's see how this card performs. To start off, we run some synthetic benchmark using 3D Mark. In TimeSpy, a direct X12 benchmark, we got an overall score of 12,286 points. While in Firestrike, a direct X11 benchmark, we got an overall score of 25,750 points. To show its real world gaming performance, we ran some benchmarks at 1080p and 1440p resolutions with high settings in some of the popular games. First up, we have CSGO, a classic competitive shooter game. We run the game at 1080p with high settings and got an average of 481 FPS with the Arc A750. That's more than enough for a smooth and responsive gameplay. We also tried 1440p with high settings and got 385 FPS which is still very good for this resolution. Next we have Dota 2, a popular MOBA game that can be quite CPU intensive. We ran the game at 1080p with high settings and got an average of 137 FPS. That's a solid performance that can handle any teamfight or action on the screen. We also tried 1440p with high settings and got 125 FPS. 
Next, we have Cyberpunk 2077, a game that is notorious for its high system requirements. We run the game at 1080p with high settings and XESS enabled on balance. And we got an average of 72 FPS. That's impressive considering the other GPUs in the same price range only manage around 40 to 50 FPS in the same scenario. We also tried 1440p with high settings and got 51 FPS which is still playable but not as smooth as 1080p. Finally, we have Call of Duty Warzone, a fast-paced battle royale shooter that features dynamic environments. We ran the game at 1080p with extreme settings and got an average of 65 FPS. The game was responsive and fluid and we enjoyed the vivid colors and details of the map. We also tried 1440p with high settings and got 49 FPS. To be honest, the Intel Arc A750 surprised us in many ways. It shows that they can compete with NVIDIA and AMD in the gaming market. The card offers a quite satisfying performance at 1080p and 1440p resolutions, especially in games that use modern APIs like DirectX 12 and Vulkan. It also has some impressive features like XESS, XMX, and AV1 encode support. The card also has a sleek design and a decent price tag. As we can see, the Intel RK750 has improved a lot since its first launch thanks to the consistent driver updates from Intel. The card now performs much better in older games that use older APIs like CSGO. It also performs better in some newer games like Call of Duty Warzone and Cyberpunk 2077. So is the Intel RK750 worth buying today? Well, it depends on what kind of gamer or consumer you are. If you're looking for a decent gaming experience at 1080p and 1440p resolution at a much lower price compared to other cards in the same performance range, definitely you will be satisfied with the Intel Arc A750 as your gaming GPU. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and if you have some thoughts about this review, feel free to comment down below and subscribe for more content. As always, see you on our next video.